Spirit of God comes, it comes with a key that opens up any destiny that is willing to listen and willing to learn. Hallelujah. The Word of God is likened, listen carefully, the Word of God is likened to light and the Bible says in John 1 and verse 5, and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. That means when the Word of God comes, it comes to drive away darkness, to drive away confusion, to drive away stagnancy. You may have heard me say it, but it bears repeating that God's method is always His Word. His method to heal is His Word. His method to lift is His Word. His method to bless is His Word. Hallelujah. So every time the Word of God is coming, your assignment as a believer is to be discerning and to receive like the Bible encourages with meekness the engrafted word. If that is you, shout a loud amen. amen. By the way, I understand there are many overflows tonight and I understand there are so many people. If you are in any overflow aside from the main auditorium, can you shout a loud hallelujah? A believing hallelujah. Let the devil hear you. Let's give them a big, big hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I'm teaching along the theme. I just thought to share something that I truly believe will be a blessing to us tonight. Psalm 102 and verse 13. Psalm 102 and verse 13. Psalm 102 and verse 13. I'll read. It says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon zion it says for the time to favor her yea the set time is come can we read it together one to go verse 13 thou shall arise uh-huh and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time hallelujah now theologically speaking there are two reasons why Jesus cried. The Bible records that Jesus cried um, two times in the Bible, according to the synoptic accounts. Number one, the first time Jesus wept was in John chapter 11 and verse 35. This was when he came to the tomb of Lazarus. The Bible says Jesus wept. And the people say, oh, how he loved him. He wept as a... An expression of compassion over Lazarus who had died the second reason why Jesus wept or the second occasion is found in Luke chapter 19 when you read from verse 42 Luke chapter 19 please the Bible says that Jesus wept over Jerusalem and he said Jerusalem Jerusalem in fact let's start from verse 41 it says when he was come near, the Bible says he beheld the city and wept over it. 42, saying, if thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto your peace, it says, but now they are hidden from your eyes. So listen carefully, two reasons why Jesus wept. Number one, he wept as an expression of compassion over Lazarus who had died. And then the second reason was when he beheld the ignorance of a people. He saw that these were a people who were like sheep without a shepherd. They were confused and he saw what they could become but have not yet become because of the bankruptcy of light. The Bible says he wept not over a person. He wept over a city. Hallelujah. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32, very instructive scripture there, 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. 1 Chronicles 12 and 32. The Bible says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. Take note now. Not just understanding of the things. They were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The Bible says the heads of them were 200 
and all their brethren were at their command. Write this down if you're writing. God is a God of times and seasons. This is a very simple but profound truth that as mighty as God is, he has chosen to operate with man within the frame of times and seasons. Say times and seasons. One more time, say times and seasons. Human activities also happen within the frame of times and seasons are we together now that means nothing happens on earth until a time is allotted to it are we together god is a god of times and seasons human activities happen within the frame of times and seasons there's no time we would have looked at ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 very popular scripture it talks about a time for several things in fact it says to everything to how many things that includes your breakthrough to everything. That includes your lifting to everything. That includes your rising, your shining. It says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the earth. Can you imagine that? Very instructive statement. So it is not enough to know what needs to happen in your life. You must also understand divine timings. There are people who have found God's purpose for them, but they still have not been able to manifest it because purpose did not coincide with time. You would hear the prophets who say, according to the time of life. Hallelujah. Now, for the purpose of our discussion tonight, there are many words that are translated time as we have in the Bible, but two of them are my concern as far as our discussion uh, is tonight. Number one is called chronos. C-H-R-O-N-O-S is called chronos. Chronos means sequential time. Time as we know to measure moments. So chronos is a word that is translated time. It means the passage of time like minutes, hour, seconds that is chronos are we together now that is the first word that i want us to consider sequential time when you talk about chronos you mean time as it is passing in seconds in minutes in hours in days in months in years but the second word that I want us to look at and that forms the basis for my discussion tonight is called Kairos. K-A-I-R-O-S. One more time. K-A-I-R-O-S. This is the second word that is translated time. Kairos means opportune time. Opportune time, it means defining seasons. Kairos means an opportune time defining seasons you just write them and i'll explain that to you kairos now please look up say for instance a student is in school secondary school js1 js2 js3 you can call that chronos that is time passing but there are moments in that student's life where if he fails a particular exam he will not go forward am i am i right on that there's his junior wayek as we know and then the senior wayek that student can afford to toy around with first term second term but once he's writing his final exam he's in a kairos moment you get the point now these are moments that if you miss them it will take the grace of god listen in every man's life there are these moments of chronos every day but there are prophetic moments called kairos and if you do not know how to maximize that time imagine that joseph missed that opportunity to stand before pharaoh that was a kairos moment are we together now this is very important so remember i said that god operates based on times and seasons and that human activities operate within the frame of times and seasons and that we have time as we know as chronos the passage of time 
and Kairos defining, you may even want to call them prophetic seasons in a man's life. I give you an example. In John chapter 5, there was a man who lay at a pool called Bethesda. Is that in your Bible? And the Bible says that at a particular time, that is Kronos, not every time, a particular time, the angel would come to stir the water and whoever was the first to jump into it, that person would be healed of whatever infirmity. There was a man there who stayed for 38 years. The problem of that man was not ignorance. He knew that the activity of the angel on the water could heal. But the problem is that he did not know how to connect knowledge to timing. Listen carefully. He had knowledge. He was not in ignorance. And yet, one year became 10 years. I'm sure he said after 15 years, I'll be fine. 15 years became 20 years, became 30 years, became 38 years of affliction without ignorance. He had knowledge from day one. When Jesus came and met him and said, will thou be made whole? He said, listen, you don't understand. Uh, every time I want to step in, the problem is not knowledge. Is that I always miss the timing. And missing the timing makes my knowledge look useless. Because my knowledge is not able to profit me because it does not coincide with timing. Are we together? Now, someone who does not even know that that water should heal. If he's able to move in first, everybody say first. first. Say first. first. That's the rendition in John 5. It was not about who was more knowledgeable. It was about who could maximize time. Anyone who could jump in first, the Bible says that person was healed. And for 38 years, a man who was full of knowledge, but did not understand that the dealings of God with men works within times and seasons tonight i'm revealing to you why many of you know so many spiritual things and yet your life may not seem to make progress the problem is not ignorance the problem is you have not known how to merge knowledge with timing hallelujah write this down there is a dimension of grace and beauty that is attached to every season. There is a dimension of grace and beauty that is attached to every season. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. Please give it to us. I want you to understand my teaching tonight. The Bible says he hath made how many things? Please look up. He hath made everything or all things beautiful. Not at every time. Everything is not beautiful at every time. It's beautiful in his time. So beauty and grace is also connected to timing. Please look up. How many of you have seen a tree grow and blossom and then bear fruits that you later would eat? Did you know that sometimes when you look at the fruit that someday you'll be paying money for, there's nothing that looks like beauty and glory there because the time has not reached. For instance, an orange. For instance, a mango tree. For instance, a purple tree or avocado. Sometimes when you see those fruits in their formative seasons, they are not attractive. In fact, you will pass them with such disdain, but give them time. Something begins to happen with time. Listen carefully. And then the tree you once ignored, now you can stand in, in front of that tree. Some would employ all kinds of skills. They will climb the tree. They will use sticks to pluck down whatever. Something, time, now made that thing become beautiful. Hallelujah. Have you tried to pluck mango that is not ripe and then try to bite and eat it? You will end up being angry with that initiative you took. Am I right on that? But if you are patient and you watch a juicy red or yellow mango, you pull it down and you enjoy it, you can turn it into whatever it is. The Bible says he makes all things beautiful. 
That means if someone looks at you and says your life is full of shame, just tell him, give me something is happening. Ah, I know I am praying and it does not look like there is profit in my prayer. I am studying. I have not yet evolved to that version of me. Just give me time. The Bible says, and Jesus increased. It is a function of time in wisdom. Are we together? In stature, in favor with God and with men. If you looked at the baby in a manger, you would, not want, you would not believe that that baby in the manger would one day become the savior. If you looked at the teenager, you would, the teenager could not call other people and say, come follow me. No, nobody would follow that teenager. But with time, hallelujah, time is powerful. Time is a mystery. Did you know that when a woman gives birth, or has her child come out and it is not time, you don't call it delivery. There is another name you call it. Not because what came out was not a child, but it came out not according to time. Am I right on that? So time can even define the names of things. That one moment you are praying, let this baby not come out. I thought the baby was supposed to come out one day. The problem was not the baby. The problem was time. And then another day comes and you are praying and say, Lord, it must be today. This baby must come out now. It says, thou shall arise and have mercy on Zion. It says, because, see, the person who is praying that prayer took time to understand times. The problem was not the prayer request. The problem was timing. It says, Lord, I have such, I know something about you. It is the season where you arise and you have mercy upon Zion. And he gives him the reason why. He said, for the time to favor her, yea, the Kairos time. The time to favor her, the time to lift this family, the time to roll away their shame, the time to give them a new name. He says, yea, the set time has come. So a father buys a car. And intends to give his son one day. But he refuses to give that son. No matter how that son cries. Until he gets to a, a stage called 18. Say time. And the same boy who was struggling for that car. The father would call him of his own volition. And say gentlemen you are of age now. You are of age. An heir as long as he's a child. He says he differed not from a slave. But he be under, I mean, even though he be Lord of all, but he's under tutors until the time appointed. Can you imagine that? That Jesus himself, as he walked upon the earth, the father never made any proclamation upon him. Not because he was not Jesus, he was waiting for a particular time. It was until Jesus got to age 30, then he went to John, being baptized of John. The Bible says he came out of the waters and the heavens were open. And God said, this is my beloved son. Question, what was he before? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Kairos moments. Kairos moments. There are many, many people who do not understand. Listen, I have watched people who are destined for greatness. Pay the price to get knowledge. But they do not know that there is timing. And listen to me. Do you know these Kairos moments I'm talking about? In a man's entire lifetime, you may not have more than 10 of these seasons. Believe me when I tell you this. 10 of these seasons in your entire lifetime. So when you find those who you call great... It is not just a function of knowledge alone. It is that by the mercies of God or by the privilege of mentorship, they have been taught like the sons of Issachar to discern times. The Bible says, and of the children of Issachar, men who had an understanding of the times. The wise men in the Bible, the Magi, what made them wise? Their ability to use the constellations to understand time. When they saw a star, other people would say, wow, the earth is so bright. And those guys said, no, this is a signification that something is happening. A Messiah is born. Let's go and check the archives. And they checked it. They said, no, we will go and look for him. Hallelujah. 
Say seasons. Say time. Hmm. This is very powerful. Time is so important. The Bible tells us in Psalm 90 and verse 12. Give it to us please. Psalm 90 and verse 12. It says, so teach us to number our days. Why? That we may apply our hearts to wisdom. There is a relationship between wisdom and time. That when a man does not understand that life is a function of times and seasons, there is a level of wisdom that does not happen in the life of that man. Is someone learning already? John chapter 9 and verse 4. Please pay attention. I want to establish a few things. John 9 and verse 4. Jesus is speaking and he said, I must walk the works of him that sent me. When? Anytime. Jesus himself said, my assignment, as much as I know my assignment, I understand that there is a timing component. While it is day. Someone say, while it is day. Now, while it is day for the night comet, I must establish that relationship while it is day for the night comet. I must invest in prayer now before I have I start having children for the night comet. I may not have the liberty that I have now as a young lady in the next 10 20 years. It says, while it is day for the night comet, when no man can walk again. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15 to 17. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus. And he says, see then that ye walk circumspectly. The word circumspect is accurately. As, as wise, not as fools, but as wise. He says, redeeming the time. What does it mean to redeem? To redeem means to buy back. Using something in exchange. Listen carefully. To redeem means to buy back using something else in exchange. It says redeem the time because the days are evil. It says therefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the Lord's will is. Listen, when I learned this principle my life changed. There are many people who do not understand there are days of visitation. Do you know, imagine the woman in Luke chapter 18. Imagine that on the day Jesus came, she was not in church. She would have missed that season forever. It was because she was present. Are we together? The Bible talks about a man who was so crippled, his friends understood that Jesus being within his vicinity was a kairos moment. They would not take no for an answer. The Bible says they were so determined to see him healed, they tore the roof and brought him in. In other words, we will negotiate with the owner of this house later. But as for now, we know it is not easy to get Jesus. How many people can heal? How many people can cast out devils? We have discernment. This man is the son of the living God. And what Whatever price we will pay, we will discuss the casualties later. But as for now, let a man's destiny change first. The woman with the issue of blood. I hope you know in one of the synoptic accounts, Jesus was on his way to Centurion's house to honor him. He said, I will heal your daughter who had died. The day that daughter was born, that was the day the woman's issue started. They were all 12 years old. So the woman said, listen, you have pain. You've lost a 12-year-old daughter. I sympathize with you. But the day she was born was the day my own trouble started too. And the Bible says, she said, if I may but touch, I will never have that chance again. Now that I have this moment, I know that if, the Bible says she said to herself, Kronos, we don't know how long she kept rehearsing what she would do. But we know that when Jesus came to pass, she said, I will face the consequences later on. But this is a moment I cannot afford to miss. And the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who touched me? The disciples said, no, you are, you are speaking unwise. Many people are all over you. He said, no, there is a woman who has maximized her, her kairos. This woman understood she virtue has flowed out of me. 
Read the Bible. Those who prepared for this moment were never disappointed. Never disappointed. Those who took it for granted. There were people who met Jesus just once. Did you know blind Bartimaeus? when you study your scripture, Jesus was passing Jericho for the last time. He would never return there again. And blind Bartimaeus understood this. And he said, thou son of David, could this be my moment today? Have mercy on me. And wicked people whose eyes were seen, they said, keep quiet. Beware of those who encourage you to waste your Kairos moment. They may not be there to face the consequences of your aborting time and destiny. The Bible says he cried yet the more. And Jesus stopped and said, what would I do? And he says that my eyes be opened. And he touched him and that was it. Hallelujah. There are many people who miss opportunities to rise even in life within the cosmos because they did not understand the power of timing. The Holy Spirit kept prompting you, go and greet your uncle. He does not come into worry every day, but now he's around and he's even around for one week. That greeting would have given you the capital you needed to start business. That greeting would have opened you up to a very new and strange and prophetic season, but by procrastination and carelessness and lack of discernment you allowed certain seasons happen there are many men of God the mantle upon your destiny was in the hands of careers but the day they were around you were careless he did is any day is he not this man of God I will meet him one day I will meet him somewhere I know how I will meet him times and seasons I can tell you stories upon stories in my life where I took advantage of certain moments that if I did not take advantage of those moments, it would take the mercy of God for me to draw back the blessings that were connected to that moment. Hallelujah. All the sons of the prophet were careless. After all, Elijah is a prophet. He knows we will eventually receive the mantle. Elisha said, no, I'm seeing the body language of this man. He's living. I will not go. I will follow you from Gilgal down to Jordan. And he said, leave me. I'm not going anywhere. Jacob was careless about this Kairos moment. In Genesis 28, the Bible says he lay down in loss to sleep. And he saw a ladder that connected the heavens and the earth. Am I right on that? And the Bible says, he even said the Lord was in this place. And I knew not. Do you know the consequence of missing that season was a total period of 20 years of misery in his life. In the house of Laban. For missing that season. The next opportunity would come after 20 plus years. Now in Genesis 32, the Bible says he dismissed his wives. He dismissed his cattle when he was alone. He said, this time I will not miss it. Suddenly a stranger comes and he holds on to him. He said, leave me for the day break it. After my 20 years of carelessness, I have learned by experience the value of your presence. He said, I will not leave you. I will not let you go unless you bless me. The name Israel was not given as a gift. It was a man's maximizing a Kairos moment. Hallelujah. A Kairos moment. I will not let you go until you bless me. What is your name? I am Jacob. Thou shalt no longer be called Jacob but Israel. For as a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed. He touched the whole of his tie and the Bible says he blessed him there and the sun arose. He called the name of that place Peniel. For I have met God face to face and my life is preserved. Many of you today whilst I'm speaking. If you are to be honest with yourself you will see certain seasons where some anointings would have come upon your life if only you were determined you heard about a meeting that was happening and it was so close to you but the discipline to get up and wait there and you thought by next week you will meet that man then you heard the man is now dead how many of you had an opportunity to see